In this video we're gonna talk about this macro lens, which is probably the weirdest and most interesting macro lens I have reviewed so far on this channel. But before we dive into exactly how it works, let's take a look at this image, because this is the result of using this macro lens. And this is what's called a stereogram. It's uh, the same subject taken from slightly different angles and when you combine them and look at it in a certain way you get a 3D effect. If you haven't looked at this before let me try to guide you. First of all it's easier to see the 3D effect if the image is a bit smaller so let's make it a bit smaller. And then what you do is you try to stare as if you would stare towards the horizon. You just look beyond the photo and you try to make each eye look at each picture. Your right eye looks at the right picture and the left eye looks at the left picture. And if you do this correctly what you will see is that the images will float together to form a third sharp image in the middle and that image should look very three-dimensional. If you manage to do that you have done this correctly. And let me also tell you that there is a small percentage of the world population that are unable to see this 3D effect. So if that's you then uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you can't get it to work with this Lego man, this very very small, it's actually a Lego baby. Let's try this ballpoint pen instead. Look as if you were looking towards the horizon, let the two pens float together to form a third pen in the middle that is three dimensional and sharp. Can you get it to work? I will show you some more examples later in this video but first let's just talk a little bit about what this is. When we look at something in the real world with our eyes, what makes it look three dimensional to us is that each eye has a slightly different perspective. And this is what this rig tries to emulate. The camera perspectives in this case are five millimeters apart. So this rig kind of emulates an insect looking at a very small object. And the prism separates the images and then each prism has a microscope lens behind it that uh, projects the image onto the sensor in the camera. So the way this prism works is kind of like how a DSLR works. In a DSLR you have a mirror so when you look in the viewfinder you can see the image through the lens and then at the moment when you're taking the photo this mirror is flipped up and the image is going directly to the sensor instead. Uh, this prism is kind of like a mirror but the thing is here that 50% of the light gets reflected up and 50% of the light gets reflected straight back to the primary camera. So that way both cameras can take a picture at the exact same moment even though each of them lose 50% light but that's, that's okay if you have a strong flash. And the result of that is that I get one image in each camera. Since I had an APS-C camera at the top I shot with the bottom camera in APS-C mode so that I would get the same picture. But still it is two different sensors and they have a slightly different way of rendering the photo so I had to adjust the images slightly afterwards. For example one of the cameras had a slightly colder image and so on. And also had to resize them of course so that they have the same resolution and then I just put them together side by side in Photoshop. Another thing that was of course important was to use exactly the same camera settings in both cameras. So this very interesting macro lens was another invention by Nick Sherlock. You might know him by now because his inventions have been featured in my videos several times already. And this construction by itself would be enough to make three-dimensional video which I have tried. You can see some of the footage here. 
it's pretty hard to see the 3D effect in video because it's even harder to cross your eyes in the right way to be able to see it. Uh, but you might try if you want to. It's easier not still image though. So this is enough for video, but if you want to take a still photo with a flash and uh, you really want to be using a flash because it's very dark with these magnifications and with this prism, uh, then you need some way to sync the cameras, uh, at least if you're hand-holding, as I like to do. And Nick has actually invented a way to do this as well. He has this device that you put on top of the primary camera, and then you attach cables to trigger both the primary camera and the secondary camera, as well as a primary and possibly also a secondary flash. And this device basically syncs all of that together. Uh, this is also invented by Nick Sherlock. And I know that lots of people are going to be asking where can I buy these things? And right now when I'm releasing this video, uh, Nick Sherlock is actually not selling these things, at least not the controller. And the reason for that is that there are some laws and restrictions around electronics and how you can export them and not and so on. So I think he's looking into that right now, but right now you cannot buy all of these things. But I urge you to check out Nick Sherlock's homepage. Maybe by the time you're watching this video, he is actually selling them. What you can do, however, is download the 3D model for the lens and print one yourself. You need to order the microscope objectives, of course. Uh, and you need to get a prism somehow. Maybe Nick Sherlock has some info on that on his homepage as well. Uh, so yeah, in short, visit Nick's homepage uh, to see if you can find information about these things. Uh, but he's not selling them at the moment when I'm releasing this video. If you sync this up and use this rig, you can take these really cool photos. Of course, it is a hassle to use this rig. And uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna be using it a lot, but it was fun to try it for once. But I mean, in theory, I could go out in the wild to shoot live insects with this, uh, since it's sinking so perfectly. Um, might try this next summer, right now it's in the middle of the winter, so I cannot really try it now. But I tried it on my friend George, as you can see here. And uh, yeah, try to look at it the way I described in the beginning until the images float together and you will see a very nice 3D image of George. Here is George's friend Charlie, because I accidentally broke off one of the antennas on George. I'm really sorry about that. So I think that Charlie will be my primary model from now on. Here is another photo of a coin. And I think the 3D effect looks very nice on this one. Here is the same coin from another angle. Pretty cool, huh? If you like macro photography and cool do-it-yourself lenses and rigs like this one, I think my YouTube channel is one of the best ones. So make sure to subscribe if you're into that and see you soon again.